Hello again. In the previous video, we went through the introduction of uh, fillet belt according to Eurocode 1993 In this video, I'm going to uh, explain how to transfer the loads from the first party to the center of the weld. Uh, it's very important to understand how the forces are coming to the center of the weld that we can calculate the stresses in the critical locations of the weld. So at the end of the previous video, we went through the explanation a little bit briefly about this. Uh, and here I have to mention that the center of the weld might be different from the center of cross section, which is uh, welded to the other party. To understand this better, we can just a sketch one rectangular hollow section to another party and assume that the weld is on the top and only on two vertical sides and the weld is not uh, on the bottom of the hollow section now if we sketch the section of this weld and the profile we can see that the load is applied to the section but it is taken by the weld the centroid of the weld will be somewhere here that we will go through the calculation of centroid of a weld in the next video but the cross-section centroid is for example here we can see that the centroid of the section is different from the centroid of the weld what we need to do, we need to transfer all the loads to the center of the weld, not to the center of the cross section. To understand how the forces should be transferred to the centroid of the weld, it's easier if we go with a simple model. For that reason, I assume that the hollow section is welded all around. As a result, the centroid of the weld will be exactly the centroid of the cross section. This is going to be the centroid of the weld. And assume that at the other position of the cantilever connected to the, uh, the other party, we have forces applied. For example, here we can have F1, F2, and F3. First, it's easier if we have a correct coordinate. Let's assume that this is X, this is Y, and the other axis is Z. We can see that the surface XY is parallel to the weld surface. So this is the plane which is parallel to the weld plane. And those forces in this surface are counted as planar forces. So XY parallel to weld surface. As a result, F1 and F2 are counted as planar forces f3 is perpendicular to that surface this force is counted as perpendicular or we can count it as tension or compression force you can use uh, a static to transfer f1 f2 f3 to the center of the weld and uh, then calculate the actions and stresses in the weld for this for example if you look at f1 it's in the distance of L from the weld. So if we want to transfer F1 to the center of the weld, we would have the bending moment and shear force. So let's call X, capital X, Y, and Z. So F1 is a planar force in the force plane, which when we want to transfer it to the weld surface or weld plane then it makes bending moment about x axis so f1 when we transfer this force to the centroid of the weld will make f1 parallel to y as shear force and f1 will make bending moment about x axis which is bending moment mx and this is fy 
Now, if we look at F2, when we are transferring F2 to the center of the weld, it's making bending moment about Y. And also, as far as it is uh, not in the same level of centroid, it can make torsion about Z axis. So when we are transferring F2 to the weld centroid, then we will have three actions. F2 is parallel to X as a result shear force fx also f2 is making bending moment about y-axis it is bending moment but this time about y-axis and also f2 is making torsion about zeta axis let's call it t now if we want to transfer f3 to the weld centroid you can see that F3 is coming to the top of the weld so we can just put it here as far as it is not in the level of the centroid it can make also bending moment about X axis so F3 is uh, it's not a good way to say it is parallel in the zeta direction as far as it is perpendicular to the weld plane it is actual force also when we transfer this load to the center of uh, weld it is making bending moment about x axis so here we can see that f1 f2 3 should be transferred to the centroid of the weld and they may produce different actions it could be shear force actual force or bending moment about x and y also it is possible to make torsion so to understand better with numbers i go with uh, some typical questions in this uh, subject that how it should be calculated assume that we have an angle and in the welded part we have this weld and let's assume we have only one force here f equals to let's say 20 kilometer with the distance of 100 millimeter we want to transfer this load to the centroid of the weld assume that this distance is 100 millimeter it can be unequal leg size of the angle and this is going to be let's say 200 millimeter we will go through how to calculate the weld centroid in the next video but here let's calculate the centroid 200 times 100 times 50 divided by 400 so it will be 25 millimeter now we have another distance which is 75 millimeter the task is transfer this 20 kilo newton to the centroid of the weld which is marked with blue here weld centroid so the first uh, important part is selecting a proper local or global uh, coordinate let's assume that this is x this one is y and this perpendicular axis is z for sure we have the force 20 kilo newton as shear force parallel to y as a result when we transfer this load to the centroid of the weld we will have f y equals to 20 kilo newton as far as 20 kilo newton is 100 millimeter away from the plane of the weld so it can make bending moment about x axis so we will have mx which will be 20 kilo newton times 100 millimeter so it will be 2 kilo newton meter if we move force 20 kilo newton to the plane of the weld we can see that it is parallel to y but it is not in the same location it has 75 millimeter distance as a result it can make torsion about z axis so then torsion will be 20 kN times 0 0.075 meters which will be 1.5 kN meters so this is the first task uh, to transfer the load to the centroid of the weld. Let's go through another example. 
let's assume we have a thin plate and we have the force here again 20 kilonewton and we have the distance 100 millimeter to the weld and we have only weld in two sides of this plate first we need to have a good coordinate x y and z and then we need to define what kind of forces or moments we would have when we transfer this load to the centroid of the weld so the centroid of the weld is marked here now we can see that 20 kilonewton is parallel to y as a result fy will be 20 kilonewton uh, also it is outside the plane for 100 millimeter this eccentricity would make bending moment about x axis so mx will be 20 kilonewton times 0.1 meter 2 kilonewton meter now let's go through another example uh, with a little bit more challenging forces layout assume that the weld is all around the section and we have two forces applied at the corner of this section f1 equals to 110 kilonewton and f2 equals to 20 kilonewton let's suppose this length is going to be 400 millimeter 50 millimeter width and 100 millimeter depth the centroid of the weld is exactly the center of this 50 by 100 rectangle now we are going to transfer these two forces to that centroid again first we need to define proper coordinate it can be local or global of your model let's start talking about the force f1 to be transferred to this uh, weld centroid usually i prefer to uh, use the projection of the weld centroid to the plane of the force parallel to the weld surface but you can select what kind of uh, uh, order you would select coming from f1 directly to the centroid of the weld or uh, starting to split it to different stages it is obvious that f1 is parallel to x as a result for f1 i will have fx which will be 10 kilonewton in the positive direction also f1 is making bending moment about y axis so i will have my equals to 10 kilonewton times 400 millimeter but when you bring this f1 to that surface it is parallel to x but it is not in the same level it is 50 millimeter above x axis if we look at it from the plane view and this is the projection of the section and weld force f1 is applied somewhere here we can see that it is making torsion about the vertical or perpendicular axis z so as a result we will have torsion coming from 10 kilonewton times 0.05 this is 100 millimeter divided by 2 so it will be 0.5 kilonewton meter now let's talk about f2 f2 is parallel to z and it's in the longitudinal direction perpendicular to the weld surface as a result it is counted as actual force and as far as it's going to make tension in the uh, in the weld it is called tension force if we follow the force f2 towards the weld surface we can see that it is exactly in the corner of the weld so i can sketch the weld and put the force on the top corner here is x and y axis we can see that 20 kilonewton can make bending moment about both axes x and y because it is not uh, projected on either of these two axes so 20 kilonewton is 50 millimeter above x axis as a result it's making bending moment about x i can write 100 millimeter so it will be 20 times 50 millimeter will be one kilonewton meter additionally 20 kilonewton 
is 25 millimeter away from y axis as a result it's making bending moment about that axis as well with the eccentricity of 25 millimeter half of 50 millimeter so it's making my 20 kilonewton times 50 millimeter divided by 2 so it will be 0 0.5 kilonewton meter the most challenging part of solving a well is transferring the loads correctly to the centroid of the weld. Let me think if I can have uh, one more interesting example to cover. Uh, assume we have a simple structure connected to a base plate, for example, and it's welded all around. F1 equals to 20 kN, and we have F2 equals to for example 10 kN I use different values that they are easy to spot for the calculation and assume that this distance to the centroid of the well is going to be one meter and this distance is going to be 1.2 meters and the cross section here let's assume that it is 120 millimeter by 60 millimeter first let's uh, select a proper coordinate for this example x y and z we can start with f1 obviously f1 is parallel to y as a result we will have fy which is 20 kilonewton also f1 is one meter away from z axis and it's in y direction so it means that it's trying to rotate z axis will be mz or as far as its bending moment about the perpendicular axis it is called torsion so it's making torsion like when we want to use a wrench to open a bolt so we are making some kind of torsion so this will be 20 kN times 1 meter 20 kN meter and then f1 is also not in the same plane so it is 1.2 meters above that plane as a result it can make bending moment about x axis so mx will be 20 kN times 1.2 meters 24 kN meter we are done with uh, f1 now let's go through f2 f2 is parallel to z axis so it is easy to spot f2 to have the force in zeta direction as far as it is perpendicular to the weld surface we call it tension or compression and it is clear that f2 is in compression side so fz will be minus 10 kN compression also f2 is crossing x if we assume that it's exactly in the center so it's it's crossing x axis as a result it's not making any bending moment about x axis but it's uh, away from y-axis as a result it can bend the whole system about y so then we have my which is 10 kN times with the levier arm of 1 meter 10 kN meter uh, we can go through another just one more example to understand it better assume that we have a plate under a vertical force of f equals to 10 kN and a horizontal force 20 kN. Suppose we have a weld here 100 mm, 200 mm in the vertical direction and 100 mm in the bottom side. The centroid of the weld will be here which this distance will be 2 times 100 times 50 divided by 425 mm. We had it earlier. And assume that this distance from here to here is 100 mm. This is a very common connection, especially for cranes. So if we look at this in a 3D model, this is our column. Then here we have the connection plate. We should have another one in the other flange. And then we have the runway crane beam on the top. So here we can see that the view from the side will be something like this. This is the runway 
crane beam here we have the connection plate better to sketch with the same color and then we have the column so then we have the weld and the force is coming from this beam and also usually we need to consider the effect of braking and also acceleration of the uh, crane so we can see that uh, those forces f1 and f2 are both in the same plane as a result they are not outside the plane and consequently they are not making any bending moment the only moment would be the moment about the axis perpendicular to the weld plane which is making torsion so if we look at this and we want to transfer the load to the centroid of the weld x and y are planar axes f1 is parallel to y as a result fy will be 10 kN and uh, later we will go through the understanding uh, positive and negative would be important or not in the uh, video related to directional method and we have due to this 10 kN which is away from y axis we have torsion and distance or eccentricity here will be 175 millimeter 100 millimeter up to the starting point of the weld and 75 millimeter to the centroid so m about z which is called t and here i will write due to f1 will be 10 kilonewton times 0.175 kilonewton meter these are coming from f1 also f2 can make torsion about z axis so for f2 we can write down that fx is 20 kN and we have again mz t due to f2 which is 20 kN and the distance or eccentricity is half of 200 mm depth of the weld so it will be 200 mm divided by 2 which is 100 mm it will be 2 kN meter when you have a similar bending moment or torsion it is important to sketch what direction you are uh, dealing with so here it will be clockwise also f2 is making the same direction torsion in the summary we will have fx we will have fy we will have t which will be 1.75 kN meter plus 2 kN meter before we start to understand how to calculate or dimension the fillet weld it is important to calculate the stresses in uh, the most critical points of the belt for that reason first we need to transfer all the loads from the source of uh, loads to the centroid of the weld in this video we went through how to transfer the loads from the source to the centroid of the belt in the next video I will go through the calculation of properties uh, or geometrical properties of the weld including uh, weld area and also moment of inertia about x and y axis or planar axis and also the polar uh, inertia thank you for watching see you next time bye